This is Damon Tennon with the Get Your GED Now Test Preparation Series coming to you with a new video with three GED styled math word problems. But before we get to that, I want to start off by telling you something I'm very excited about. I want to tell you about my one week GED challenge. Just did the first one of the year, had 17 students. 10 of those 17 really uh, really uh, participated and just made it just a great time for me and excited have just started my second uh, one week GED challenge of 2015. I want to tell you that there's three things in this GED challenge that are going to help you. Uh, the first thing is that there is video. And excuse my writing, it's not the greatest here, but it gets the point across. Video. I am going to show you some of my best videos that I've used to help people just like you uh, who've been working on passing the GED test but have been doing so for six months, 12 months, 18 months, and possibly even longer. Many of these people stuck on math. Many of these people stuck sometimes on the essay writing and now what is called the extended response writing section. But again, these videos will show you proven strategies and ways to get prepared so that when you go and take this GD test this time around you pass it this time around the goal is going to be different so I'm challenging you to watch these videos to really pay attention to them listen to them and take the real nuggets of gold that lie within these videos that I'm going to share with you throughout the one week GD challenge the second thing I'm going to share with you are practice tests and let me just abbreviate that with the PT practice test it is so crucial to know how the questions are written. It is so crucial to know the word problems, the the, the the multiple choice, the fill in the blank, the hotspot, to understand how these questions and, and, and beyond that, but to know what specific knowledge they are trying to draw from you. So there's practice tests in the GD challenge. Again, this is guided towards people who have been been striving and struggling for a long period of time and I am challenging you if I can give you the information that you need now this is not about a magic bullet this is not about hey I'm gonna you know give you everything you need and, and you're gonna be successful no this is about me putting the tools in your hand and then you make a decision about what you do with them so there's video there's practice tests, and then the final thing and the most important thing is the one-on-one -on -one time with me I've been teaching GED since 2001 and I've been helping thousands of people locally and also online to actually pass this test the 2002 version and now again in 2014 the 2014 version and again um, this one-on-one -on -one time is you and I specifically sitting down and mapping out a plan that is specific to you not just some general thing hey study this study that no a specific plan that that will help you to actually get ready and to do the work that you need in 2015 so again I invite you to go to my website www.mygedlive.com going to write it here at the bottom and you can go there and you can sign up for this one week GED challenge and you can just watch the videos and you can take the practice test and you can get that one-on-one -on -one time with me and I will guarantee you at the end of that you will at least know now it's up to you if you actually do something with it but you will at least know what is necessary for you to pass the GED test in 2015 now let us go ahead and jump into these questions that we have uh, here so the get your GED now test preparation series here is just a practice test just giving you some GED style questions to get this new year going so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that All right, so now we got this copied here, and so uh, what I want to do is I want to come over here and get that a little bit skinnier so it's easier to work with, and we want to go ahead and do number one. So Earl and Paula bought one-sixth of Gantt International's common stock. Jose and Luis bought one-third of the same company's common stock. Alana bought two-fifths of the stock. If there were no other stock owners in Gantt International, what percent of the company share remains? So everything I do stems off of two things the first thing is identifying the question what is it that they're asking us and here it is what percent of the company shares remain so we're looking for percent remain and I'm just going to abbreviate that RM 
And then my second step I always do anytime I'm dealing with word problems and other problems as well is what information do they give us? OK, so we know that uh, Earl and Paul and we'll just abbreviate them. We know they bought one six and we know that uh, Jose and uh, Lewis and abbreviate JL, they bought one third. And we know Alana all by herself bought two fifths. Now, so we know we're trying to get to the percent remaining, and we know that all these shares were bought. So it stands to reason that if we add up all the shares that were purchased, and if no other stock uh, was was purchased or was available, then we know that whatever would be this the op the whatever would be left over would be the percent remaining so then we're just going to go through and just work this out so we're just going to pick the first two fractions and add those together and this is not a fraction lesson so i'm not going to spend too much time showing you how to add fractions with different denominators but i'm just going to do it here so that's going to give us three six and we know take a 3 out of that and a 3 out of that to reduce it we know that gives us one half okay so now we know that these first two fractions are one half and so now we're going to add that to this third fraction which is one half plus two fifth and again I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time explaining how to add and subtract fractions that have different denominators just gonna do it that's 4, 2 goes into 10, 5 times, that's 5. 5 plus 4 is 9 tenth. So we know that all three of these fractions together equal 9 tenth. And so then we have to go back to our question. Well, we're looking for what percent remain. Okay, we don't know that yet, but we do know that 9 tenth. So we're going to go ahead and um, convert that fraction. 9 tenth, 9 divided by 10 to a decimal and we're going to get 0 0.09 and we're going to convert that decimal to a percent 90 percent so we know that 90 percent of the stock was purchased well of course we know that the company is a hundred percent value so we now know that a hundred percent of the company minus the 90 percent I'm just going to arrow that will leave us 10 percent of the shares remaining or question C so again every time we identify the question we state our path we take the information that was given and we just use it to get back to answering the question the percent remaining okay now let us go down a little bit here to question number two Jerome drove 504 miles to Niles Bay on Monday. Sue drove 936 miles to Baker's Bay on that same day. If Jerome's drive to Niles Bay took seven hours driving at the same rate of speed, how many hours did it take to drive to Baker's Bay? So again, we want to go ahead and ID our question. And the question is, how many hours did it take Sue to drive to Baker's Bay? So I'm just going to say Sue to... I'm just going to abbreviate that BB Baker's Bay now a couple things let's state our path so we know that this is going to be a ratio proportion problem why because whenever we see that driving at the same rate of speed or at the same clip or whatever anything that indicates is at the same rate something that's happening at the same rate we know it's a ratio and proportion so that's the first thing we're going to state our path with we know it's a ratio and proportion problem now the second thing we know is that there's Jerome okay and we know Jerome was 504 miles and he did that and let's see it says right there seven hours and then we know that uh, Sue she drove 936 miles and we don't know how many hours that's the question uh, how many hours did it take Sue to get to Baker's Bay and draw a better question mark there so now again but I said we know it's a ratio and proportion problem because because of that phrase at the same rate of speed so now we're just going to set up a proportion Jerome's 500 miles and four miles to his seven hours is equal to Sue's 936 miles and we have to find out how many hours why because the same rate of speed lets us know 
that we can set these up as being proportional. So then we know our two-step process for um, uh, solving a proportion is we multiply the cross product. So the, the number that has a number across from it simply is the cross product. So we're going to come over here and say 7 times 936. Then if we do the math, which I've already done ahead of time, so we're going to get 6,500. And 52. And then the second step is simply by to divide it by the remaining values. So the remaining value is 504. So we're going to divide that by 504. And again, I've already done the math ahead of time. So we're going to get that number 13. And so we get answer A there. So again, identifying the question, stating your path. With the stating your path is simply what information have we been given in this problem and using that information so that we can successfully solve the problem. Let's keep on chopping down to number three. So uh, again, I'm just going to already set this up here because we know we want to identify the question and we know we want to state our path. Now let's go ahead and jump in and read it. So Marty found a great deal on carpet, $1.67 per square foot. How much will it cost to carpet the room below? Hint, round final answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we have this shape here, and so we might be thinking, well, what, what formula? We know the formula for a rectangle is length times width, and the triangle is one-half base times height, and the circle is pi r squared, you know, finding the area of a shape. But this one might not be a, a formula that many of us might be familiar with or, or as we're thinking through. So, um, Again, we can make this into shapes that then we can work with. So now instead of just dealing with that shape that was there before, now what I can do is make it a triangle, a rectangle, and a triangle. And so this 35 is going to be distributed along this length here. So this piece right here we already know is 11 because if it's 11 on this side it's 11 on that side and so we're going to say 35 minus 11 so we can figure out the rest of that length distribution is 24 so if I divide 24 divided by 2 I get 12 why because this is 12 and this is 12 so if I were to add this up 12 plus 11 will give me 23 plus 12 more would give me 35 and so that's how I account for my length of 35 there. Now the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to uh, um, identi identify our question. Now we should have did that first but I got a little bit excited about showing you uh, how to break this shape down so let me just take a step back. So the question is cost is uh, cost whoop, to carpet the room Cost to carpet the room and I'll just leave it that way now so state our path so now I've already kind of jumped in that the first path that we did was we recognize that this could be broken into three shapes the second thing we're going to do is we're going to look for um, the the pieces that we need because we need the square foot of this whole room so this one piece we're going to call triangle one okay and we know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. That's going to equal something. Then we got the second triangle, which is going to be the same thing, but we still want to account for it. One half base times height. All we're doing is stating our path. We're just laying this thing out here. Then the third shape there is the triangle. I mean, sorry, the rectangle. And we know that's length times width. So our length times width, and we already know the uh, um, width of the of that shape. So now we're just looking for the length of that shape, which we don't know. Okay, and on these triangles, we already know the base of the triangle is 12. So base, we're going to put the 12 base there, but we're looking for the height of the triangle, which we don't know. But fortunately, the height um, of the triangle and the length of the rectangle that we're looking for is the same exact length. So once we find it, then we can plug it in for both of these and then get our square footages that we need. Now, a little bit of more work we need to do here. 
So we know that this is what a right triangle. And whenever you have a right triangle and you know two sides, the third side can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this is another piece of stating our path. Okay, and so we know that C is the slope. So we're going to go ahead and, or the hypotenuse, and we're going to go ahead and put that number in, 20 squared, because that's C. But then A or B, it doesn't matter, because each or both legs of the triangle, and they're added anyway. So we'll just choose 12 to go into A, and we'll have B squared, or B be the unknown. Okay, so uh, 12 squared, 12 times 12 is 144, and then we're going to get 400. 20 times 20, 20 squared is 400, and so we're going to subtract 144 from each side. Now, why do I do that? Well, you know, I'll just refer you to my other videos um, that can explain uh, solving these kinds of problems, but for the sake of time, I'm going to move through this one a little bit quick quickly. So b squared equals uh, 256, so then plain old b equals the square root of 256. So again, let me just repeat that one more time. Again, I, I deal with this elsewhere, but if b squared equals 246, then plain old b equals the square root of 256, and the square root of 256 is 16. So now we have our height. Oh, let me write that a little bit better and get a little different color for emphasis. Uh, so now we have our height and our um, length of the rectangle. So I'll go ahead and put that 16 in there, put that 16 in there, put that 16 in there. So 1 half times 12 times 16 is 96. And of course, if that triangle is 96, the other has to be 96 because it's the same length. And then 16 times 11 is 176, and this is all square feet. And so that adds up to be 368. Now, let me point out something here that is very, very critical. Number one, the first thing that most people are going to do when they get here, they're going to stop and they're going to see this 368 here, okay? And they're going to think that's the answer. But again, this is why identifying the question is so key because we want to know how much did it carpet. Now, these measurements are square feet. They're not dollars. So even though the numbers are the same, they're different values. This is square foot. These are dollars. Okay, so now we have one more step, which is to take 368 square feet and multiply it by the cost per square foot, which is $1.67, which we were given here in the problem. And then that's going to give us $614 and 56 cents. So as we were instructed in the problem to round it to the nearest whole number, so that's going to be rounded up to six hundred and fifteen dollars, giving us our answer and giving us answer D here. Again, this has been Damon Tennant with the Get Your GED Now test preparation series in 2015, bringing you some GED styled math word problems just to get you ready. Um, but again, you got to get in on this one week GED challenge. You got to do it because if these kinds of problems I'm doing is, is giving you any measure of problem, you need to get with me and have me help you at least show you what you need, if not help you to prepare totally. So again, this is Damon Tennan with the Get Your GED Now Test Preparation Series. Go to my website. You see it right there, www.mygedlive.com, and sign up for this GED challenge today. It is worth it. It's going to revolutionize your GED preparation, and you are going to do awesome.